face that this world has forgotten. Bear in mind, going into this video will contain spoilers for the upcoming Pokemon Sun and Moon game. Don't watch this video unless you want to get spoiled. Ooh, what is up guys, and of course, welcome to another video from yours truly, the Skyrinder. And we are going to talk about the Mega Evolution buff that have happened. It actually isn't such a big buff, but it is a game changer in game mechanics. And that is of course the abilities and base stats that are shifted in the speed tier. Previously, if you were slower than your opponent, even though your Mega Evolution was not, you were still slower turn 1 due to the of course mechanics actually being of second nature when it comes to affecting the likes of speed stats. The speed stat went before the Mega Evolution, even though Mega Evolution has priority. Now the shift is so unfolded that it actually goes turn 1 when it comes to Mega Evolution, then the shift of speed tiers. Which means that Pokemon of course such as Mega Daenchi will now be born with the 110 base it was made to be coming and not those 50 base first turn. Which of course means a big variety of representative of mods, so we're actually gonna go over them one by one and just talk about them a little bit. And I should say this list only includes Pokemon that actually has a shift in their speed tier or ability. And looking forward to actually just go on and buy it basically. Gengar gets of course a speed raise to 130 from the get-go. It is banned by Smogon rules today, should be mentioned. But um, it's very likely that he would come back even though he has that Shadow Tag ability onto it. Kangaskhan getting that speed raise to 110 speed. Um, Mega Pinsir of course go for, I do believe, from 90 to... Uh, or 85, I mean. 85 to of course 105 from turn 1. Um, Mega Medicham goes of course for 80 to 100 turn 1. Mega Alkazam, which might actually become a bit of a threat now. So we're from the beginning, but definitely are much much more menacing now. Going directly for 150 base speed, um, which is generally scary because you could always utilize yourself that you are slightly faster, but this is definitely not of those times. Uh, Mega Redactyl fast by default. Mega Sister getting that slight boost, which could be helpful for it actually. Um, Mega Manetric, of course, getting that speed directly. I do believe it's 105 to get directly for 135 times with Mega Law Pony. Also, a very, very scary speed here to be on directly because it is forced out easily. And being able to, of course, Mega Vault without worrying, yeah, that's a big deal. But a big deal is also Mega Houndoom, which as of yesterday is a 95 based Pokemon. When did Mega Vault go on 115? The reason this is a big deal is because it now actually outmaneuvers Pokemon by default. It could be extremely helpful for it. It still has a rather, one should say, lacking move pool. But getting that extra speed is going to be helpful for it, you know, or at least in the metas that are today. Uh, hopefully in the new metas it's that just at all, really. And then we have Tyranitar, which... Uh, and then we have, of course, Mega Blaze again, which is... Uh, I mean, it's a speed race, but you know, it gets speed boost, so it's kind of... Kind of relevant. And then we have, of course, Mega Bayonet, which actually might be that much more interesting. Not the extra speed race, mind you, but the ability Prankster, which of course goes by default. Meaning that when you're Mega Vault, you will directly be able to go in for that Will O Wisp or Thunder Wave or Pain Split or Destiny Bond, you know, whatever your heart desire, you have the ability to do so with Bandit without being in a massive disadvantage. The reason Mega Bayonet has been somewhat unreliable when it comes to the meta as of today is because of the Prankster ability kicking it out the turn after, which making Mega Sableye much, much more reliable, or actually not Mega Sableye, regular Sableye. Much, much more reliable than Mega Bane, and it, and it could even imagine to become. But now, who knows, Mega Bane might just be able to be a bit more menacing and threatening than it ever had coming. So, Mega Bane is clearly a big winner with this new design choice. But, of course, we have a pitch one more with even bigger changes and, of course, winners. So, one of the definitely big winners here is, of course, Mega Swampert, who. Sure has those extra speeds, but that's not the reason why. It is because of its ability. Switch Swim now heads off turn 1. The reason that's a big deal is because that means that it's not forced out in the rain. Uh, if a Pokemon could have been, of course, carrying Energy Ball, Giga Rain, Hidden Power Grass, you know, I don't know. It now has not the possibility to hit first, and Swampert does hit hard. And being able to hit hard even without being evolved is going to matter quite a lot for it. I do believe Mega Swampert just plays a different ball game now. Whether or not it stays in UU, 
It's a different story since of course the meta might be shifted altogether, but knowing that Mega Swampert now has the ability to be ferocious in the rain turn 1, yeah, that, that's gonna scare most people off directly, it's gonna be an excellent revenge killer for of course the last reset rain. Then we have of course Mega Absol, we do get the same kind of treatment as Mega Houndoom. For the life of me, I can't imagine why regular Sableye has 75 base speed, he's outmaneuvered by a plethora of Pokemons, now 115, it's going to be a ferocious threat turn 1, and of course being able to beat 110 Pokemon base speeds are extremely helpful because that means that you outmaneuver them and you hurt them quite hard, so Mega Absol getting this, yeah, that's a big deal for a lot of reasons. It, it does have, of course, Sucker Punch and stuff like that, but being able to offense it by default is clearly going to be his mantra this generation. Mega Sharpedo, it could be helpful. Um, I'm not going to take that away, but of course, regular Sharpedo has, of course, um, <laughs> speed boost. It might just be very well be that this Pokemon is going to carry, protect, and speed boost anyway, because of, of course, the speed race, but that's still a thing. And now we come to probably one of the bigger winners, which of course Mega Beedrill. Mega Beedrill has a massive raise in his speed. It's a 77, it's a base 75, damn, it was hard to say that. It's a base 75 base speed Pokemon. And it's a really bad speed here if you are as fragile as, uh, well, Beedrill is. So getting that raise to 145 turn 1, together with, of course, the massive raise that is its attack. Of course, I do believe 60, which basically knocks it out of the park. It, it, it's now ferocious, like really ferocious. Sure, it doesn't get any kind of races below, losing protect for any other filler moves such as knockout, drill run. It's going to be extremely helpful for it. I do see people talking about Felsting Elite Seed, and while I'm all for Elite Seed, or no, I mean Leech Life, uh, I still kind of worry that B really is still, you know, fragile. I mean, it's. Uh, you, you basically look at it as fall apart, so it, it's speed enough, definitely, but I don't think it's it's <laughs> bulky enough to utilize that speed. Though granted, it is just a strong existor, so it might not be a reason not to use it. If anything, you know, to void off the stealth rock damage, if that is, of course, a passive hit on you. But that's about it. Mega Beedrill is a big deal now, and it basically is because it has a loose protect now to be able to be offensive turn one. And it's very possible to see, of course, Leech Life, Poison Jab, Grill Run Knockoff, or even Sword Stance. So you're all for it. Could go Felsing with Soul Desire, like I said there. It's still bad, but with adaptability, it does hurt slightly harder than usual. So, Beedrill, welcome to OU. I am sure about that. I'm not even gonna joke. That, 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 this thing is like a real threat now due to it. And then we'll make a Pidgeot, which get, of course, massive raise from, I do believe, 101 speeds here to 121. Making it quite ferocious as by default, and not being forced to run protect, which I've seen people do, is helpful. Now, to them, rough spot, and that is that Pidgeot still doesn't have a move pool to kind of utilize itself over that, but Hurricane, Heat Wave, and I do believe U turn are standard, which get with Defog or Roost, and it now is able to do whatever it so desires if you don't want to carry Roost, or I mean protect. Having that said, 101 is still a good speed tier for it, so it's not, it's not the game changer, but it's a helpful change for Pidgeot. Um, Mega Glalie, um, directly to base 100, that's dangerous, I'm just gonna say it as it is. Um, being able to force out any defensive wall that could possibly be faster, such as of course Cresselia, nice, that's awesome. Salomon is getting that speed boost directly, fuck. <laughs> Mega Metagross is getting the speed tier directly, fuck. No, seriously, that is a big deal. I could talk about Mega Metagross, how how good I think it is, but also how hard it is to use it. Uh, I've used the lead form a plethora of times, so I kind of feel I have the ability to talk about it a little bit. And Mega Metagross, of course, sparks in that 70 base speed. is is not a bad speed tier whatsoever, but being forced to carry Bullet Punch or Pursuit to be able to Mega Vault without getting damage that's the that's the issue with it because it's very easy to take down or whittle down a Mega Metagross if you know what you're doing and I do believe most people do. Um, so um, it definitely represents of course the league format, not so much the OU standard place. But what I want to say is that with the directly the speeder and not being forced to use possible speed or bullet punch um, could make Metagross all the danger it previously were and. Um, 
I don't like it. I definitely don't like it. I think it's definitely what tips the corner of what is to be considered broken because this thing hurts hard. Being able to at least win the speed tier against it once is more than enough to whittle it down. But now when it's actually a speed you're on, yeah, that's that's a real danger right there. Uh, Mingle the Corio getting that speed race, that's that's not gonna be broken. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mega Zeptile getting, of course, that race. Super helpful for it because of the um, speed tier that Mega Zeptile is representing. Mega Zeptile is a super speedy mon. Having Pokemon being able to have speed it is super frustrating. So seeing Mega Zeptile being able to actually utilize itself well, by default turn 1, yeah, that's gonna be extremely helpful for it. Def it should be noted though, this is actually a situation I've gotta realize because I've actually been on this on Ladder and UU before. Beedrill versus Sceptile is now gonna be at speed high. Because previously, Mega Sceptile had a chance of KOing, of course, Beedrill if it didn't carry Protect, but now that they share its speed here and they're both 155 from turn 1, oh my god, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a nightmare. And then we have Mega Law Pony, which of course with his 30 boost in speed, making it 135. It still could be used well with Fake Out because it has Scrafty. Scrafty basically means that this Pokemon hits anything it needs to. So well, while the speed boost directly is a clear perk for it, it never really struggled. So I think Law Pony might as well look as much much the same for of course this generation. And then we're gonna follow up that with Gilade. Gilade, I do believe, is the Pokemon that got outshadowed with, of course, Mega Medicham, mostly because of, of course, lacking Fake Out and being of 80 base speed, not by default. Now, I do believe it's slightly more dangerous. I should say that Mega Medicham is still superior Pokemon due to, of course, the sheer amount of power that Pokemon represents. But seeing Gilade like this, yeah, it could as, might as well be much, much more reliable this time with that 30 extra speed, making a 110 Pokemon. Speaking of another 110 Pokemon, which is not Audino, Mega Dayenshi probably got the best bulk out of everyone, really. Not so much because of the speed, actually. I'm going to be completely honest here. Mega Dayenshi has always lacked, actually, a proper hidden power, and uh, they fixed that already. Um, so if you're gonna carry hidden power fire to be able to take on the likes of Paraforn, you can do that without actually <laughs> risking yourself of being a worse speed tier. So you could, of course, creep with a lot of tweens. But of course, we're gonna talk about the things that matters. You are not forced anymore to run protect. You were forced to run protect if you use Mega Dienchi. Hell, I can only tell you as much of my experience when it comes to Mega Dienchi, which I do love. Mega Dienchi is the Pokemon for me, definitely my favorite Pokemon this generation. And um, yeah, all I can say here is that due to, of course, lacking that extra speed, of course, it's a Pokemon that will fall fast, because when it Mega Evolves, it clearly loses its defenses, and quite a lot of it actually, so much so that it's actually very very easy to take out, even though it still has 110, I do believe, in its defenses, it's, um, it still gets massively debuffed there. And uh, being able to hurt from turn 1 not being forced to be protect, of course, with the likes of being a possible set of fodder, it's a very, very, very big strength of this Pokemon, most, most certainly. Because that means that you still can carry likes of Diamond Storm, which also got a boost, uh, going for plus 2 this generation, so plus 1, if you get that 50% chance going to Mega Diamond Storm, Moonblast. Then you can optimize for Earth Power or Hidden Power Fire, and then Cold Mine and Rock Polish if you so desire. You can do that without being at risk while Mega Evolving. You don't have to optimize your set much, much, much longer. You can be as strong as you wish. And that is just knocking Mega Dienchi out of the park. I do, I hope this Pokemon doesn't become, you know, considered as broken because I do like this Pokemon quite a lot. But I can definitely see this Pokemon becoming probably the spread it was born to be. So Mega Dienchi, welcome. <laughs> so yeah, everyone, that is of course the video. Obviously, the second page got a lot, lot longer because there are a lot of more threats in this page than the first one. Um, how do you guys view this, of course? Have you guys seen any changes that you wish transpire here for next generation? And with that said, thank you, of course, so much for watching. It's always a pleasure to have you guys around and watching my videos. And, uh, yeah, stay posted. There will be more news videos coming up, actually, today. So with all that said, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care.